Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's Daily Show on Facebook, where we show you one cool thing which we are testing in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan. This is Max Eddy. Uh, we are taking your comments and questions as usual, and today we have kind of a big topic. We have a product, but more than the product, we have the topic as a whole of password managers. Password right? managers. It is the simplest, best thing you can do to not have fraud, identity theft, hacking, all that stuff. It's so simple, and almost no one uses it because they're wrong. I don't know what to say about that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, while, while, the, while the viewers spin up here, I'm going to tell you a little story about this weekend. Tell which us about is this that, weekend, Sasha. Well, this weekend, I got a text from American Express. Oh, there you go. Saying that they had detected fraud on my account, and I looked at, uh, I went and looked at American Express and found that for the past two and a half weeks, somebody had been doing fraudulent charges all over the five boroughs on one of our credit cards. Wow, that's really remarkable that it took them that long. Like, one, yeah. of the, one of the amazing things about living in America, and there's very few at this point, but one of the amazing things about it is we have incredible consumer protections when it comes to credit cards, which is why I always tell people, if you are concerned about online theft or mm -hmm. just fraud in general, and you, you really should be, uh, you should use credit cards for everything. They're very, very good. They'll usually catch it within one or two. They're all about algorithms. They're all about figuring out your actual spending strategies. Well, so, so, so what, they, what they did in this case, and I'm, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> Woo! Pardon me. Okay. Because you're pregnant. Um, so, um, so what they did in this case, it was actually a smart credit card thieves. What they did was, up until yesterday, mm -hmm. they had been exclusively charging basically uh, gas stations, Dunkin' Donuts, and diners relatively near my house. Wow. Oh, so, that's actually terrifying. They knew where your house was. Well, no, no, like in the five boroughs. Okay. In the okay. five boroughs, you know, within our city, within mm -hmm. our fair city. But, of course, yesterday, they got greedy, and they did a Target online purchase delivered to someone who was not my name. That's so good. And, of course, that flags it, and I call American Express and get it all canceled. So one of the reasons why that happens is because in uh, circumstances specifically with food point of sale and gas stations, that they're using older point of sale machines where they don't scan the chip that is now in most credit cards. Because if they do that, it's a swipe transaction, and if I remember correctly, all of those transactions are card not present, because that's just how it works now. It's mm -hmm. basically the same as an online transaction, and that means that there's less security on it. Okay. Most of the time, it's because it's less cost. Mm -hmm. And again, because of American consumer protection law, the merchant is on the hook for that, or the credit card companies, depending on mm -hmm. a few things. The point is, you are not. And that's why that's fraud is hear. really interesting in this country, because it doesn't matter what happens to you, as long as you're not using a debit card. If you use a debit card, you have to go through the FDIC. It takes like three weeks, you have to file a like, claim report. As someone who's had all their money transferred to Turkey once, <laughs> it takes a while and it's really inconvenient. So use a credit card, folks. But yeah, what you're getting to is uh, something that has become a very common experience for most people, which is that critical pieces of their information have been stolen mm -hmm. and used, sometimes for extended periods of time without their knowledge. Yeah. So the reason we tell people to use password managers isn't just for passwords, but it's for entering all of that kind of information. A great way that you can have your credit card number stolen is to type it in on an unsafe computer. Perhaps it has a key logger on it. Mm. You can have a, a password manager like Dashlane 5, which is what we're talking about today, by the way, uh, Dashlane will enter that information for you. You never have to touch it. You never have to know it. So, okay, so so um, I don't use a password manager. That's which is bad. Something that appalls Max. It's bad. And I think it's because I have a lot of uh, I, I have a lot of internalized myths about password managers that I'd like you to break down. Yeah, let's start okay. with the first one. And the first one is that a password manager will only work on my home and work computers where I've installed the application. No, actually, uh, in fact, that has never been true. Okay. <laughs> So there are a few password managers for the very, very paranoid that do not have a cloud syncing feature. Um, if that's something that you're looking for, they do exist. Keep that in mind. But the vast majority of them uh, encrypt your information locally, upload to the cloud, store it in encryption, so that no matter where you go, you can always log into a web interface, copy and paste it right out of there. Now, if you install uh, a standalone application, that's fine. But 
we prefer that you install the browser application. So a lot of these will plug directly into your browser. Mm -hmm. They'll see what you're logging into. They will play back the credentials if it has it. And if it doesn't have it, it will help you create an even better password so mm -hmm. that you, uh, you're less likely to have that broken. OK, second myth. Yes. The password manager is only as strong as the password you're using for the password manager. So what's the point? Can't they just crack that password? So yes, they obviously can. And that is, a, that is an issue. That has always been an issue. However, password managers, unlike every other company out there, they have to make sure that they never fail. If they fail, then all bets are off. Equifax. Now, we actually have seen some failures in uh, password managers before. And uh, when I say you know they can't fail, that's not true. Everyone will eventually. However, they dealt with it really, really well. We've always been impressed by that. These companies know that their reputation is built upon your ability to trust them with your passwords. Now, it's not just passwords. It's how they're encrypted, how they're stored, how they're sent out, whether or not that information is kept in your memory uh, after you replay them mm -hmm. into the browser and that sort of thing. Obviously, you want to make a very, very good pa password for your password manager. But mm -hmm. then you only have to know one. Okay. You only have to know one, and you can make it really weird, really complex, and you can write it down somewhere. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. The important thing is that it's very, very good. Okay. So now, um, so now, technically today we're talking about Dashlane. Dashlane What's, five. What is the difference between the various password managers out there? Well, a lot of the differences come down to price. Dashlane, for example, costs forty dollars a year. LastPass costs twenty-four dollars a year, and a lot of these break down in different ways. Um, there's actually some interesting little foibles about these. A lot of them have free ways to use them. Dashlane, for example, if you use it on only one device, it's free. Mm -hmm. If you use, uh, I think you can use LastPass anywhere and have it be free. They, they just tier their, their system a little bit differently. The important thing is any, any of these services, they will be able to record your information, mm -hmm. play it back on mm -hmm. pretty much any device, including iPhones, Android, what, whatever. And then they will also be able to create new passwords for you. And I think this is the thing that people are the most scared of because mm -hmm. they feel like they don't want to trust a machine with their passwords because we understand in intuitively that passwords are really important. However, psychologically, we also overestimate our ability to be smarter than computers. Well, I think also, like, and this is also another irrational, almost, almost mythical reason people don't do this. I don't want to generate, I don't want to auto-generate a password for an important thing because if I'm then somewhere that I need to enter that password and I don't have the app, I won't be able to get access. So as I said, Dashlane 5, along with pretty much every other uh, password manager, has a web interface. You can log in, copy paste, drop it in there. Mm -hmm. It's as secure as secure can be. If you're comfortable doing your banking on a website, you should be comfortable using mm -hmm. this as well. You can usually install this stuff directly into your browser so you can log into whatever browser you're in as a guest. You'll pull down that plugin. Mm -hmm. It'll make it work right there. Or my favorite is I just pull it up on my phone, copy, like look at it, and type it in. And sometimes it's tedious, and sometimes I get the O's and mm -hmm. zeros confused. But you know, usually get it right most of the time. And that that idea though that you don't know your own passwords really frightens people. Yeah. But the thing is, humans are phenomenally bad at passwords. We, we are really, really bad at them. You can read all these articles about how many tips and tricks and little mnemonics to generate mm -hmm. better passwords. Just let a computer do it. This is why we have computers, is to make jobs easier. Th this will do a much better job. For example, uh, we were talking about passwords earlier. I think most people still have internalized that like eight character password. We yeah, all thought because, eight, eight characters, letters, numbers, maybe like Well, I mean, for point. years, many sites wouldn't accept a password that wasn't eight characters. Right, exactly. So we've all internalized that one. But how many of those ex like special characters are something other than a period or an exclamation point? Mm -hmm. You already take that amount of entropy and shrink it way down. These password managers, Dashlane defaults to 12 random digits and numbers. I think, uh, I think it's the last pass is like 14. I use 18, because why not? I think 18 is usually somewhere between the maximum for most websites. When are we going to be able to use emoji for passwords? Some of them will actually let you do that. Uh, some services will do that. I think there's some issues around, around that. And how much more entropy does it really add is, a, is an interesting question. And how can you make sure that that is like... I think it's just fun. Yeah, it is fun. No, yeah. I, I, I'm all for that. I mean, you know, you, you actually want like a good, a good tip trick kind of thing is use a different email for like every login. Mm -hmm. That's a major point of failure right there. But yeah, the important thing is that uh, Dashlane, like its competitors, is much better at making passwords than humans are. Okay, so uh, let's let's take a question, and then I have another great uh, password manager myth. How hard is it to move from LastPass to Dashlane? They are all very very easy. Uh, they will import all of your information from the previous versions or from al alternate versions, or if you've actually been using the built-in password managers that come with Chrome, Firefox, 
whatever mm -hmm. operating system you're using, Apple, Microsoft, Google, whatever, it will actually import all of that for you because you've probably done a pretty good job of maybe keeping some passwords stored there. Uh, Dashlane and, and LastPass, but Dashlane especially, has a new feature now that will actually change your passwords for you. If it knows, that, if it detects that you have a weak mm. password or a reused password, or, and this is important, if it, is, if it detects that there has been a breach on that website, mm. you can just press a button and it will change that password for you. There's about 500 websites that that's supported for. Mm -hmm. It's very, very convenient. Okay, so next, next myth. Myth. Isn't, I love busting myths. Someone should make a show about that. Isn't two-factor authentication enough? I have two-factor authentication on all my important sites. Aren't I protected? Right, well, two-factor is itself the second factor. You, you need one factor first. <laughs> it only works with, with the passwords. You can't just have your 2FA option. Right, but what I mean is, like uh, the you have the, to have a good password for two FA to mean anything at all. But uh, why? Because even if someone cracks my password, right, they aren't the going to be able to get my phone. So that's the whole point. That's the whole point mm -hmm. is that if you don't have two, if you don't have a password and a second factor, and we're talking mm -hmm. about special codes sent to you via SMS or generated by something like uh, Google. What is it called? Google Generator? I, I just blanked on the name. Yeah, uh, uh, Facebook Code Generator. Facebook Code Generator. Yeah. Google has one. Lots of, lots of services mm -hmm. have them. Duo is another service. Mm -hmm. um, these all work by adding a, basically another thing that attackers would have to do to break in. So in this case, we're talking about if they manage to somehow get past your password, mm -hmm. then they won't have your phone to receive that special SMS. Right. They won't be able to access whatever service you have to generate that code. Right. So, you might say that that is enough, but it's not, because that means that you just shift the point of failure to the phone, mm -hmm. to whatever service that is. The whole point is that getting a password is, is an effort. It's an effort, quite a bit of effort. And then moving it to something that you have, something mm -hmm. that is like unlikely to be taken from you, makes it much, much harder. So why, why just do one thing when you mm -hmm. can do two? Um, why not have both? Exactly. Next question. Is your password manager with two-factor authentication for its master password? Um, pretty much all of them support two-factor authentication. Uh, I use LastPass and I use YubiKeys and also uh, Google Authenticator, depending on which device that I am. I'm on. This is one of the neat things about these services is that they will like they'll look at it and say, "Oh, I see you're logging in from a phone. Use this two-factor thing that you have already nominated." Or, "Oh, I see you're logging in from a computer." Use your YubiKey instead. Yeah, I was going to say, are are any of these uh, any of these password manager two factor uh, options? Do any of them have their own dedicated hardware dongle? Like a um, hardware dongles, no. Hardware dongles are a challenge because you have to usually have some kind of central authority issuing them. Mm -hmm. But you can get YubiKeys, uh, which is a, a hardware device. You tap it, it spits out a one time code mm -hmm. into the password field, or in my case, into Slack channels by accident. <laughs> And you see like 180 characters filling it up with what the hell's Max doing. Um, but yeah, so none of these have hardware dongles that I'm aware of. However, a lot of them will work with Google Authenticator. And Google Authenticator is actually kind of like an open API thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dashlane and LastPass have their own versions of Google Authenticator that work almost seamlessly with passwords that you've already mm -hmm. saved. So for example, when I'm logging in with LastPass, if it detects that it can support it, it will just say, just authenticate this on your phone. And the app pops up, and I go, yes, and I'm in. Now, are Dashlane and LastPass really the, the only two password managers people should be considering? No, there's a lot more. We have an entire roundup of the best password managers to look at. And I think the big differentiator for people is that the most average people, like it's hard to get them to use password managers in the first place, and making them, making them do it with the utmost security is, is impossible because why would you want to do that? So uh, Dashlane and LastPass are great products and we think that most people should use those. If you are extremely paranoid to the point where you're like running your own version of Linux on a air-gapped computer this uh, guy. in a salt mine, <laughs> thankfully not me, not yet, but if you're one of those people, there are password managers that, that run on like USB sticks or are, can only run on local devices they see, a lot of people will see the cloud as a point of failure. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily wrong, but I, I do think it's unreasonable to expect average people to like, you know, there, there are people out there who say, if you're using Dashlane, you're just opening yourself up to problems because you're not running it on a secured blah, 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 blah. Like it works for like the vast majority of people. Now, uh, let's take another question. So which would you say is better, LastPass or Dashlane? And so right now, um, 
my colleague Neil Rubenking gives Dashlane five five star review. That is very rare for him. Neil Rubenking once gave it's actually rare for anyone at PC Mag. We do hardly any five star reviews. I, and it's important to remember too that Neil once gave a product a half star. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember the last time I did a five star review. Oh, that's so sad. Well, it's it's phones, you know, yeah, like. All phones, Only God is perfect. <laughs> yeah, like I, I feel like I feel like all phones, someone has like a deep complaint coming from the yeah. depth of their bowels about, and and so that takes you down to four point five. You know, and, um, and that's absolutely true for mm -hmm. products like this. Like someone can look at Dashlane and say, oh, oh, this this runs on the cloud. No, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the neat things that Dashlane does. But is, you said we like them running on the cloud, so we, that's actually a plus in we our. We like world. them. Yeah, we absolutely like them because that's what that's makes it easier for people to use. And you know, the worst thing is to not use one rather than use one that is like ninety nine percent secure instead of a hundred percent secure. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This cracks me up. So yeah, this is talking about five star reviews. Um, now, of course, we we have a culture around here at PC Mag where we have to find a pro and a con for every product, mm -hmm. and the con for Dashlane is limited support for Internet Explorer. I mean, okay, you got to say something. Okay, yeah, yeah. Got to say if, something. If you if you are having support for Internet Explorer, you, you have a are a problem. <laughs> And I, 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 I guess I shouldn't, I shouldn't no, air our no, dirty no. laundry right now. No, but, but please, please, tell, um, me, tell me what you really think. I, I really think. How about that the there, Sean guy? I God, really think God. that there is a there is an internal application we have to use here at PC Mag that requires Internet Explorer. Oh yeah, um, let's not talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> do you so, have a whole separate computer to run it? Because I know I do. Nope, no, I, I have a, I have a virtual machine. Oh, that's yeah. that's actually real good. Yeah. So one of the neat things about Dashlane that none of the competition does is uh, actually goes back to the very roots of Dashlane. Now you might be thinking, why is it called Dashlane? Mm -hmm. Dashlane. Yeah, I was like, I was like. When I got this, when I got the name and mm -hmm. I started looking up the product, I was like, is this a radar detector? Is it some sort of like like car traffic thing? You're actually super close. It was originally a shopping application. For like checkout, okay. checkout lanes. Okay. So it had, it had a whole bunch of like third party shopping stuff and it was really, and, and then the password manager was just like a part of that, mm -hmm. a part of this so thing. So you shop on all the sites. Something, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly can't remember. Okay, I remember okay. being pitched this product and, and that was just many moons ago. Uh -huh. But one of the things that has kept on from those early days of Dashlane is this receipt capture system. So it can detect when you're logging into a web page uh -huh. and it will play back your credentials. It can also detect when your transaction is complete. And you know that page pops up and says, Keep a copy of this receipt yeah, for your it records. It keeps the copy. Yes, it keeps That's the copy. That's cool. That's it like is. an extra, like it's like an extra bonus feature. It's like an Easter egg. Yeah, it's really useful, and lots of people like it, and it's still there. Cool. Combine that with the unique ability to change up to 500 websites of passwords automatically, and also uh, sharing passwords. Now, I don't know about you, my spouse and I have like a handful of websites that we both need to access, mm -hmm. and I don't want to know her passwords. Mm -hmm. So what we use is, we use LastPass that allows us to share a password jointly, mm -hmm. and in some cases, depending on how you set it up, I could share a password with you and you would never see it, mm -hmm. but you'd be able to use it to log into something. Mm -hmm. It's very, very useful, and you can also set up um, inherited passwords. Mm -hmm. So if I were to die, my spouse would That's be able to, really important. My That's spouse really would important. be able to log into my stuff and burn all my porn. Like this is really important stuff, and, people. And if you and if you saw the momentary look of blankness on my face, that was me thinking, I actually have no idea how many people have access to our Hulu account. Oh yeah, no, don't. Yeah. You don't don't go don't down even, that don't road. Even, don't don't even, go down that road. I'm not going to say that because of a certain <laughs> show on CBS All Access, I might have like the most used credentials in America or something like that. <laughs> okay, just tossing let's, that out there. Let's take another question. Hello. What are the chances of these password managers getting breached, just like say HBO or Equifax? So uh, I think it's really important to to remember that no matter what happens, every security system will fail eventually. Um, the point is that these systems are built in such a way that it's very, very difficult for them to fail. And when they do fail, they understand that they need to respond quickly and honestly. Um, we've actually seen a couple of breaches at LastPass. Um, I'm pretty sure we've seen some issues with Dashlane as well over the years. And they've always impressed us with how well and how quickly they respond to these problems before they become catastrophic. So they don't hide them for three months and then sign you up for a recovery product that doesn't work? Exi I'm not saying I just did a bunch of roundups of those, so I'm not going to comment mm -hmm. on that last bit. But yes, this is we've been really impressed with them over time. A lot of people will say that, oh, a password manager is now a point of failure. But you know, every single password is individually encrypted and hashed. All your information is stored in the best way possible, because these companies mm -hmm. know that if they lose your business, they're going to do it because they failed. 
So that's, that's not what they want. They want you to keep using it and to be comfortable with it. My friends, we are all points of failure. We, uh, yes. Um, do we have any more questions out there? So okay, great. Use a password manager, guys. I know it seems really scary, but I, I have embraced this. And over the last five years, I can now say with confidence, I know none of my passwords except the one I used to log into these things. Dash lane five, it's great. It's, it's Andrew's really choice. Good. Five stars. Take a look at the review on PCMag.com, and we will be back tomorrow with another cool thing for you.